Hello everyone and welcome to this very special episode on TREAT, the online channel for doctors created by The Older Doctor. And we are here today to talk about some very important aspects of the coronavirus. How do we make sense of the rising number of cases of corona in India from a statistical and epidemiological viewpoint? What should be the testing strategy as we move forward once lockdown is completely relaxed? Does the concept of herd immunity even exist? Well, to discuss this and much, much more, it's my privilege to be joined today by a renowned epidemiologist in the country. He's the professor and head life course epidemiology at the Institute of Public Health, the Public Health Foundation of India, Dr. Giridhar Babu. Thank you so much for joining us uh, today, sir, to discuss this very important issue. So to, Thank you, Nitin. So to start off, let's just look at the stats of the current cases. So as per at least unofficially, uh, we have almost, it's 1,19,000 cases, active cases being 66,000, with the recovery rate being 41%. Now, my main question to you is that there were a lot of prediction models which said that the peak would happen by early to mid-May and that the number of cases which were estimated were beyond 13 lakhs sometimes. So do you think all this is because of the lockdown and do you think that we are going to hit the peak now once the lockdown is lifted? Yeah, so I think most modelers did not know what India is going to do. Uh, nobody thought India will go into a nationwide lockdown when the modeling was being made. So uh, that's one aspect. Two. If you don't know India, then the modeling about India is born to fail. So most of the people who work in settings where things are very systematic, uh, probably will predict uh, in a way which is systematic. The third thing is the models themselves are uh, completely uh, uh, difficult to understand how the disease spreads. I'll give you an example. Most of the modeling done is compartment modeling either SIR or SIER. One of the common assumptions in both of these models is that there is homogeneity of the population within the group. So now I and you know, everyone, all the viewers will know, can you compare two states in India and then say they are homogeneous? Or can you say within a state, a few districts are homogeneous? Our language, our behavior, everything changes from few kilometers as we move forward. So therefore, these are very strong assumptions. Without knowing these things, it's very difficult to model uh, uh, how an infectious disease is going to spread, number one. Number two, uh, everybody is thinking only in terms of R0, which is very important. How many people get infected from one infected person? Correct, correct. That is assuming that the infections will spread only in this manner. But you see in India what has happened, whether you take the Nizamuddin cluster, Nanded cluster, or uh, the cluster because of the Chennai market, all of this is happening in a confined space where most people are clustering together. So this is known as dispersion index. None of the models so far have accounted for dispersion index when they predicted. Therefore, all those numbers were wrong. But what have we done based on the uh, the kind of R0 that we had earlier and the doubling time, all of these estimations. Today, the government of India has released four different models. And according to them, what we have been able to do successfully is we have averted 1.4 to 2.9 million uh, infections in India because of lockdown. And we have prevented or averted nearly 37 to 78,000 deaths. So in your opinion, the so-called peak do you think it is going to happen? And if yes, when? So the one of the main object, I mean, the, I'll tell you the three objectives of lockdown. Number one, you reduce the uh, speed of transmission. That has been achieved. Two, get your health systems ready in such a manner that if there is a surge in cases, you will be able to meet that surge. And most importantly, number three, postpone the peak because when you are not ready, when the peak occurs, your system simply can't handle. New York is an example for this. So, yes, so we postpone. When you postpone, it is bound to happen at some point of time. And if you see already the kind of increases that we are seeing is happening because of the partial movement and infected people are tra traveling from one area to another. But the advantage India has is 
more than 80% of the infection so far is only in five states and nearly 70% of all the covid burden is in 10 cities in the india so we are not seeing the kind of surge that the other countries are going to see because it is mostly contained to few urban areas few means 10 urban uh, locales and if you are able to uh, continue stricter containment measures in these 10 cities we are going to do really well so the peak will be there but it will be much lesser than uh, what it could have been and it might be around mid july assuming that on 30th of may the lockdown will be lifted okay. if it is not lifted if there is another lockdown five then it will not occur in mid july so okay. all these assumptions are very important i think uh, lockdown now is uh, attaining terminologies like the avenger movies avengers 1 2 3 and all that but there's a very interesting point that you brought about and that was about clustering of cases so like you rightly mentioned four states in the country almost account for 67% of the cases and like you said most of these cases are clustered in cities now the worry is that if the lockdown is lifted then we might lose the beneficial effect that this clustering of cases has been given so when we lift lockdown do you think that the clustering is going to disappear leading to more widespread disease or in your opinion should lockdown be continued in the so called red zone so uh, nitin we should not continue lockdown nationwide for sure we should come out of this it has a lot of social economic and uh, humane uh, consequences so for that reason we should be coming out of it but the country is not coming out of the lockdown just without any other measures being in place every cluster that you alluded to in terms of you know having uh, 80 percent in the five states and 70 percent within 10 cities all of these will be under strict containment zone there will be a strict seal border buffer zone will be there people can't move in and move out even in future our focus is to maintain the same kind of strict control or containment in addition pick up the new clusters as they come and this this is the strategy lockdowns and containment hand in hand and the only way you can do that is by strict surveillance mechanism and that is being uh, strengthened so before we come to the aspect of surveillance i just would like your opinion being a foremost epidemiologist as to how does the medical fraternity or even the general public for that matter make sense of the increasing numbers now we were having 3000 new cases per day in the last week or so which has now gone up to roughly about 5000 or 6000 the doubling rate however is staying around 13.5 days now there are some people who say that this is because of increased testing and if you were to look at the numbers per million of the population, India just has about 81.42 cases at this point of time, whereas USA has 4,600, UK 3,650. So in your opinion, is this reassuring or do we need to look at some other metrics to sort of start making sense of these increasing numbers? It's, it's really unfair to compare with UK and US for two reasons. On March 25th, when India went into lockdown, India and US were in sort of comparable situation. It was just in the Washington um, around. and the, You see what has happened to US now. The number of deaths totally we have is around uh, 3,000 plus, 3,600. Whereas in the US, these many number of people are, uh, are casualties, deaths every day. So what, what has happened in UK and US is they did not adopt lockdown early enough. So the kind of infections per million population you'll see in UK and US are completely different because you have allowed the infection to spread because that was the strategy mostly, at least in UK, they stated that we'll have herd immunity through the virus itself. On the other hand, we have had a nationwide lockdown and you and I know that. We are, I'll give you an ex another example. Look at Bangalore and the other cities in India. We don't have that many cases going forward we will have definitely lower mortality and we'll also have rural areas if we are able to protect them and the way the preparations are rural areas are much better prepared than the urban areas the problem is in urban areas because you don't have healthcare workers going house to house you don't have where to go but the kind of at least in karnataka the gram panchayat the task force have been made 
uh, arrangements for converting the local marriage hall into uh, you know uh, quarantine has been made and uh, the district hospitals are being equipped with oxygen line for every bed not just icu or uh, you know pre op kind of setup so the kind of preparations the lockdown has given us we will continue to have lower mortality for sure and in terms of testing uh, and also the other things in terms of why our uh, numbers are low uh, or why the numbers are increasing but uh, the number of deaths are low is because you are expanding testing definitely we are you are picking up all the people who are there two clustering of cases as i explained before almost 60 to 70% of our cases can be explained by clustering so if you avoid clustering then the number of cases will come down and even in future that should be our strategy no marathon no melas uh, this is the way for us till we get a vaccine tune into our next episode to find out that despite the increasing number of cases how can we say that the pandemic is under control the importance of deaths per million and what should the surveillance and testing strategy be as we move forward